Happy day! Praise God, He is good. All the time, God is good. Let's pray. Thank you, God, for this day that you have made. We can all rejoice in it. Thank you, God, that we are free and free to worship because of Jesus. Thank you, God, that you love us. We thank you for another year for Odessa Ariola Mazin and Alan Ariola. We pray for your touch on their hearts and minds so that they can continue to abide in you. Give them protection as nurses as they work with patients who might have COVID. Holy Spirit, help us to listen, learn, and apply your word today so people can see Jesus in us. Holy Spirit, we need your help so that in all we think, in all we do, in all we say, we can be a light for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Psalm 25, 1-3 says, To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, I trust in you. Let me not be ashamed. Let not my enemies triumph over me. Indeed, let no one who waits on you be ashamed. Let those be ashamed who deal treacherously without cause. The Lord will never disappoint us when we, when we put our trust in Him. I know that giving our tithes and offerings is an act of trust, but be assured, God is always faithful and He will never let us down. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord God, <clears throat> for, the, for giving us the resources, the finances, and we acknowledge, Lord, they, they are all blessings from you. Lord, I pray that we may remember your faithfulness and give our tithes and offerings, Lord, faithfully to you for your glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
One of the biggest issues that's facing our nation today, besides COVID-19, is the political division within America. I've heard that due to political differences, friends have been torn apart, and I'm sure families have also been torn apart. As a church, this is something that can also tear us apart. I would like to read you a letter from our executive minister of our region, Andy Quint. Dated October 27, 2020. Dear friends, in a few days, the United States is having an election for several offices, including presidency. Therefore, I'm going to tell you how to vote. The Times demands it. I know Abco Flash is American Baptist, is supposed to be apolitical, an apolitical organization, meaning a, an organization that has no political views. Our tax exempt status requires that I don't endorse anyone, but I must. Therefore, I'm telling you right here and right now how to vote and vote for God. <laughs> Did you really expect me to be to take a political side? Why not? It's easy these days to get caught up in the in the great political divide. Tuned into MSNBC, then Fox News to see how much the country is at odds with one another. The political ad says that if the Democrats win, we're doomed. Or conversely, if the Republicans win, it's the end of the world. At least we American Baptists are in the same political camp. Right? Wrong. I could take a political position right now and offend half of you. At least according to one recent poll that says that the American Baptists are just about equally divided between Democrats and Republicans. Therefore, our country is so divided, so polarized, so I'm right and you're wrong, so my side is good and your side is evil. Ladies and gentlemen of the Church of Jesus Christ, I implore you, don't take that bait. There's too much to be done for His kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. In fact, there's so much work to be done that we cannot allow politics to eclipse our love for the Lord and for one another. Not that being involved in politics necessarily excludes God. I realize there are times to be political. I'm just saying that we need to make sure that we are keeping God first because our agenda must be His. And as Abraham Lincoln said in that heat of the Civil War, my concern is not whether God is on our side. My greatest concern is to be on God's side. For God is always right. The early church had political issues within the body, which caused divisions. As we will read from 1 Corinthians 1, 10-17. Listen to verse 10. I appeal to you, brothers. This is Paul talking to the church of Corinth. I appeal to you, dear brothers and sisters, by the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ, to live in harmony with each other. Let there be no divisions in the church. Rather, be of one mind, united in thought and purpose. At this point, Paul is pleading with them to live in harmony with the wonder with one another to get rid of all the divisions and be united in mind and thought and purpose. You see, here's, here's the issue in, from verse 11 and 12. For some, of the member, for some members of Cleo's household have told me about your quarrels, my dear brothers and sisters. Some of you are saying, I'm the follower of Paul. Others are saying, I follow Apollos. Or I follow Peter, or I just follow only Christ. They were quarreling among themselves and saying that they are followers of certain people, certain leaders. And I believe the quarrels are stemming from an attitude of superiority rather than humility among themselves. You see, again, some of them were saying, you know, I'm, I, I'm a follower of Paul. And others are saying, I'm a, fo I'm a follower of Apollos, or I'm a follower of Peter, 
And some just said, I only follow Christ. In essence, you're wrong and I'm right. Mine is better, yours is worse. There's nothing wrong with having strong passions and beliefs. It's good to have convictions, but we need to be careful because they can lead us into pride and divisions. Notice how Paul addresses this issue. He says in verse 13 to 16, Has Christ been divided into factions? Was I, Paul, crucified for you? Were any of you baptized in the name of Paul? Of course not. I thank God that I did not baptize any of you except Crispus and Gaius. For now, no one can say that they were baptized in my name. Oh yes, I also baptized the household of Stephanus, but I don't remember baptizing anyone else. You see, when they baptized people during that time, the leaders that baptized them were the ones that people followed. So if someone was baptized by Paulus, they would be followers of Paulus. And if someone were baptized by Peter, they would be followers of Peter. But those things are not as important as Christ. Because we don't baptize people in the name of Paul or the name of Peter or the name of Apollos. None of those people were crucified for us. Only Christ was crucified, crucified for us. And Paul continues in verse 17. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the good news. And not only with clever speech, for fear that the cross of Christ would lose its power. Paul wasn't, call, wasn't called to, be, to baptize people, but to preach the good news. It doesn't, it, it doesn't really matter who baptized you. What's more important is that the gospel is preached. But when the church is divided, and when we lose focus on preaching the gospel, we lose our effectiveness in our witness. We as a church, as a body of Christ, need to continue to be unified lest we lose our effectiveness in our witness. Paul knew the importance of people seeing the church as one team working for one goal, and that's ultimately glorifying Christ through Bible studies, evangelism, and fellowship. When we begin to lose focus on that and focus more on our differences and superiority over one another, the cross of Christ would lose its power. The effectiveness and the ministry of the church also loses much of its power. How do you deal with this dilemma within the body of Christ? In the same book, Paul had to deal with the issues of division. The early church had lots of problems. People were misbehaving and causing lots of stress within the church. But I believe Paul sums up the solution in the most famous chapter during weddings. 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Paul states, Love one another. Love one another. Verse 1 to 3 says, If I could speak the languages of the earth and of angels, but didn't love others, I would only be a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. If I had the gift of prophecy, and if I understood all of God's secret plans and possessed knowledge, all knowledge, and if I had the faith that, that, that I could move mountains, but didn't love others, I would be nothing. If I gave everything I had have to the poor and even sacrificing my body, I could boast about it. But if I didn't love others, I would have gained nothing. Paul is saying that even if we have all the knowledge and the faith and good works, it doesn't matter unless there is love. Even if you truly believe your party, your, your Republican or Democratic party is right, and you have the best choice for America, 
and your leader is the one that they should choose. And let's say, let's say even say that when we look back at it, your, your leader, your political figure was the right one to choose. But if you don't learn to love others, all of that knowledge would be in vain. You'd be like a noisy gong or a clanning cymbal. Basically worthless. Paul is calling the church to love. Yes, there may be times when we have to deny ourselves by keeping our mouth shut to, to prevent hostility about political issues. Yes, we may have to keep our emotions in check. Yes, we may even have to smile even though we don't want to smile. But we need to learn to love one another. Let's quickly look at some of the words Paul uses to describe love. In verse 4 it says, Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It doesn't demand its own way. It's not irritable. And it keeps no record of, of being wronged. Now how do we apply these descriptions of love in the context of political differences? Especially when one has claimed victory and the other claims that the game is not over yet. Tensions are running high. How do we love one another as Paul calls us to love? Two things that I'd like to suggest to help us deal with these political differences, especially now when tensions are very high. Number one, be careful not to be self-righteous. Be careful not to be self-righteous. It's easier for me to sound self-righteous when I know I'm right and others are wrong. Being a competitive kind of person, I can easily go into a game mode attitude when my goal is to win and not to lose. And just think of myself and make sure my message is heard loud and clear. And the bonus, bonus would be to make them know that I'm right and they are wrong. But guess what happens to the discussion when I have that kind of attitude? The discussion becomes more of an argument. We need to be careful not to think that we're better than others. You know, I don't, I don't think that's what Paul had in mind when he said, love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It doesn't demand its own way. You know, as we communicate, may we show love. We must be willing to listen and speak with patience and kindness. We need to speak with the right tone and attitude. We don't have to always agree. But we really need to show love and concern for, for other people who may not have the same political viewpoints as we do. So the first, first point, be careful to not be self-righteous. Be careful not to be self-righteous. Second point, be humble. Be humble. One of the most loving things we can do is to be humble. Basically think of others before ourselves. And according to Philippians 2.3, it says, Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in loneliness of mind or humility, let others esteem, let each, each esteem others better than himself. Let each esteem others better than himself. One of the most humbling acts is to listen to understand from others. To listen to understand from others. Stephen R. Covey says, said this, Most people do not listen with the intent to understand. Most people do not listen with the intent to understand. They listen with the intent to reply. 
they listen with the intent to reply. We really need to learn to listen for understanding. We need to go beyond just thinking that we need to get our point across. We need to listen with, a, with intent to understand. One of the greatest things you can do for a person is to let them feel that they are being understood. This is difficult because we need to be willing to focus on others before ourselves. And for many, including myself, it's going to take being intentional and have a conscious denial of oneself to make this happen. We really need to be willing to listen for understanding. Brothers and sisters, like I said earlier, we live in a time of very high political tension within our families, within our friends, and potentially within our church. And despite our differences, may we learn to show love for one another as we deal with each other with different viewpoints. May we be careful not to be self-righteous and talk with love and concern. And may we be humble, humble enough to be willing to listen with the intent of understanding rather than just to get our point across. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much that we have the words of Paul that encourages us, Lord, to love one another. And I know, Lord God, many we have many people and, the, and many of us disagree with one another. But Lord, in spite of our disagreements, may we learn to love as you have called us to love one another, Lord God. As you also have loved us, may we show the same love to others. Lord, help us, Lord, to not be self-righteous, but to be humble, Lord God, just as you are humble. That our words may truly show the love that you have given us. For your glory, honor, and praise. And I ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. In the hymn, Servant Song, it reads, Will you let me be your servant? Let me be as Christ to you. Pray that I may have the grace to let you be my servant too. I pray that it may encourage you to love one another as we serve one another. Just as Christ was our ultimate servant as he gave his life for us.
master, let me serve you. Let me be as Christ to you. Pray that I may have the grace to let you be my servant too. May the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and to all just as we do to you, so that He may establish your hearts blameless in holiness before God, our God and Father, at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all His saints. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.